All right, so in this video, we're going to get started with Gatsby. But I think before we we get started on installing and setting it up, let's just quickly talk about what it is and why you might want it. So on the screen here, I've got some, some little icons set up for some things. And let's just run through what happens when someone views a website, right? So here's the viewer over here on their computer, right? They send the request out to the internet. The internet goes away and finds the server where that website exists. Okay, then the server probably is using some kind of server-side technology. You know, a lot of things you see on websites, for example, like WordPress, they use some server-side languages. And what that means is there's some processing has to take place before those website pages are sent back and displayed in your browser. So let's just run through an example here of that quickly. And to point out where you know potentially some of the problems are because we've all had that situation where you go to a website and it seems like it's taken a while to load right and as we all know in this day and age if you don't capture someone within three seconds and give them their web page they're probably going to move on to somewhere else so here it is right we've got the this server has has gone along and it's got the request now let's say it's a wordpress website for example which uses a php language so it sends off and it gets the PHP file. Now this PHP file has to be converted to meaningful HTML before it comes back to your web browser and gets displayed. So being that it's WordPress and PHP, right, it's going to go off now to a database that's sitting at the back and it's going to get that information from the database. And in the meantime, while it's getting that, there may also be some CSS involved or maybe you're using a preprocessor lang pre language like SAS or less. So it's going to go away and it's going to say, hey, I need the CSS. Well, if we're using one of these backend preprocessors here, that's got to be processed and converted to CSS and then sent back here. right? And then maybe we've got some images. So we're going to get those image files as well. And then maybe there's some other files. So now we're going to, get, going to prepare those other files. Meanwhile, the database up here has, re has got the information that it needs from the tables and given it back to PHP. So PHP has now taken all of this stuff on the server here. And this is the server figuring this out, remember. So it's using up you know, resources on the server as well. And you may be one site hosted with a bunch of other sites, which means there's a whole bunch of sites doing this at the same time. So it's all starting to slow down and the returns are getting slower. And meanwhile, you know, the poor user is sitting over here waiting for it still. But now everything's ready. So what happens is now it comes back, right? All of this is gathered together and finally PHP renders out some HTML to send back. So it goes back through to your internet connection here and then on to you, right? So it's sending back the HTML. It's going to send back the images and the other files and all the CSS and all of that's going to come back here. And eventually, finally, after all of this squiggly mess, it's going to get rendered on your screen. Okay? So as you can imagine, even with a fast website, sometimes that can take time. So let's now have a look and see what Gatsby can do for us. Let's take out all these lines. Right, so let's go through this the other way. Now, Gatsby is a static site generator. And what that means is, on the client side, me as the developer, you as the developer or maybe even someone set this up for you and you're just going to provide the content, it's going to figure all of this out ahead of time for you and give you simplified files that you can upload to a host. Now, the first thing to remember here is, you know, PHP runs on certain host servers. .NET is another one. You know, you'll have heard of Apache and all these server-side terminologies. Well, the beauty of a statically generated site essentially means we go back to thinking about technologies from, say, the 90s. All we end up with is static HTML files and CSS files and image files and whatever other files we may need, like video or something like that. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, this sounds like it's a move backwards. But, you know, funny enough, the irony is with the speed that we need to deliver things, and the amount of bandwidth that we want to try and preserve these days for things like mobile devices, right? Phones, tablets, and all that kind of thing. We've got this cycle that continually keeps coming around every so often where now we need to optimize again. But with a statically generated site that delivers these HTML and CSS files, 
The beauty is there's no server-side rendering. It's already been taken care of. So it's going to be really super fast. So let's walk through this, right? So again, as the user, you send the request to the internet. The internet finds the server, goes off to the server, and the server says, hey, yep, I got that. Let me give it back to you. Well, it doesn't need to do any of this server-side rendering. It doesn't need any of this database, all right? It doesn't need any of this SAS or less preprocess if you're going to use it. So immediately it says, hey, I've got some CSS, some images, and some other files, and the HTML. And I'm going to package all of these up, and I'm just going to send them straight back to you. Because I don't need to figure anything out. It's already been figured out ahead of time. So I think you can see how super fast this is. There's no waiting for the server to gather everything up and then calculate it and crunch the numbers for you on that side. So that's why you're going to see these things become more and more popular. Okay. So that's why Gatsby is now a tool that I've taken to liking and you've you've heard about other people using it. And on the outside, of course, I'm sure you're thinking it's a lot harder to use because there's no, you know, server side administration, although there is some, but there's nothing where you can go in like WordPress and just write a, write a you know, a WordPress page or a WordPress post. And then, you know, that gets consumed in there and, and delivered back to the user. But it really is not as hard as you think it is. And we're going we're gonna to work through this in a series of videos. So today what I'm going to do is show you how to install Gatsby on your local machine and to get it up and running to just generate a very simple site. And the other beauty of this is because there's no server-side rendering, you can actually run this site locally on your machine while you're working with it. Okay, And, and you can do real-time editing as well, which is another beautifully save, time saving thing that I think you'll appreciate. So let's get rid of all of this. Okay. So here we are with the Gatsby site. Okay. Gatsbyjs.org. And, you know, you can certainly go here and get all the information that you need, but there's a very simple way to install this. I'm doing this on a Mac, uh, but you can do this again on any platform. It exists for, it's actually a node package. So you can use it on Linux, on Windows, on any platform that you choose. Now, on the Mac here, I use something called NVM. And NVM is, this is not part of Gatsby. It's just what I use to install and set up Node.js. You do need to, to have an install of Node because it is a Node package, okay? So all I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go over this very quickly here. Um, if you wanna do it this way, there's a very just, basically you can just take this command here copy and paste it into your Mac terminal and it's going to install NVM. And then once NVM is installed, you can very simply, I'll, I'll go down here and I'll show you, you can just tell it to install whichever version of Node you want, right? So all you would do on the terminal is NVM space install and I'd go to nodejs.org, look up the version numbers. So in this case, 10.15.1 is the current version. So I would just say, nvm install 10.15.1 and boom there it is you've got it in node installed and you are ready to go so you may want to look at this way of doing it or you may already have node installed and if you don't want to do it this way you can just go here and to nodejs.org and download node from there the reason i use nvm again is it's very simple for me to manage the versions of node installed on my machine so once you've got that installed that's the only prerequisite that you need so now that you've got it node installed let's just go down here just quickly all right so there's a some amazing amount of information on the gatsby site here but all you need to do to install gatsby is install it like any other node package so i'm actually gonna go ahead now and i'll bring up my terminal and we will take the install and site generation from there Okay, so as you can see, I've got the Mac terminal. I'm using iTerm, but it's the terminal here on the left. And on the right, I've got the Safari web browser with just a, an empty tab there. So we're going to go ahead, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check that I've got Node installed correctly, and I'm just going to do that by saying Node dash dash version. Yep, I've got an installed version of Node, so that's fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the Gatsby package. And to do that, I'm going to type npm, and then I'm going to do a global, and that's going to save it so that I've got it access to it in the future. It's, I'm going to be doing lots of uh, different websites with Gatsby, so I, I want to have it available all the time. 
and now I'm going to say install and the package name which I happen to know is Gatsby dash CLI and now when I do that you can see it's going to go away and it's going to download that NPM package into the global cache on my machine for the node packages and there we go so now that I have Gatsby installed I can actually go ahead and create a site so let's do that first of all I'm going to show you there's uh, nothing in this folder at the moment I'm going to make a directory and I'm just going to call it uh, Gatsby test okay and then I'm going to change to that folder you know again an empty folder right now and now we're going to create the new Gatsby site and so to do that I'm just going to use the Gatsby command and it's very straightforward it's Gatsby and I'm going to say new and then I'm just going to say Gatsby dash site and that's going to go away and download the files here for me it's it's running it's also grabbing a sort of a, a starting default template for me to work with from the git repositories uh, it is important to know that a Gatsby actually sits on top of React. So whilst you're working with Gatsby, uh, whether you realize it or not, you'll actually be learning some React and using that as well at the same time. Okay, so now we've got all the files. And it's just going to grab a last couple here for us, and then I'll show you the file listing. Depending on the uh, speed of your website, uh, your internet, of course, as to how quickly those files come down. But let's now do a file listing. And you can see that it's created this new Gatsby-Site folder for me. Let's go in there. All right, and we'll just do a quick file listing. So these are all the files you get out of the box. It's basically a, a complete ready-to-run Gatsby site. Now, um, just to check that everything's working okay, what we can actually do is run a development server on our machine while we're working with Gatsby. And so to do that, we're going to do Gatsby, and we're just going to say develop. And that command tells Gatsby, okay, go ahead, compile the files for me, break them down into that HTML and CSS and all of that stuff. And then, as you can see, it compiled successfully. And it's also given me a little information here. So let's take a look at this quickly. It says that I can now view this website by putting in this web address over in my browser, which is what we're going to do in a second. Notice that there's this other one, this GraphQL here. And what this is, is it lets us interrogate the the data that we have you know break down and work through that data to find the parts that we need now that's not relevant right now and it may not even mean anything to you right now but going forward just know that we've got this super useful resource available to us where we can actually debug our own data right there in our web browser to find what we're looking for okay so let's go over to our web browser and let's put that address in so it's HTTP and then it's going to be localhost and it's on port 8000 so we're going to run it what it's saying here is that the server itself is running locally on port 8000 that's what that means so we'll put that in and bam look at that you've got your Gatsby site it's up and running and did you notice how quickly it loaded as well and it even has a second page here and you can see just look at how quick that is because there's no rendering involved it's just straightforward HTML files ready to be delivered. So that's our Gatsby site up and running here. Now, just to show you, if I go back to the terminal here and I do Control C to stop the server from running, if I now try and load it again, notice that it can't, right? So that's how we know that the server's not running. Before we wrap up this video, there's one other quick feature I want to show you that Will become extremely useful to you during your Gatsby development and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce the size of the console there the terminal and underneath here I've just got uh, the files open here in a code editor and I'm just going to don't worry about this file structure and what all these files are in the coming videos we're going to go through all of this stuff but for right now I just want to show you this SRC this source folder is where all the files that are used to generate our site live and if I go under pages and I open up this index.js this JavaScript file this is the index page itself that is actually rendered for us when we run in the browser so I just want to show you something here and I'm just gonna run Gatsby develop again so that we can have the server running and while it's doing that I'm just gonna go into this file and what I'm looking for here is 
Notice this H1, this header tag here that just says hi people, okay? And so now this is completed over here and it's running. So I'm going to go ahead and load the website. Now it has this live reload and editing feature. And anytime I make a change in a file and save it, Gatsby is going to notice that. Node running on Gatsby is going to notice that in the background and reload the page for me, which is very helpful when you're making minor changes uh, or even major changes. Uh, it's perfect, for example, when you're working with layout and CSS and that kind of thing, because you can keep tweaking the site in real time and you don't have to keep you know reloading the page manually or saving it and uploading it to a server or anything like that so if I just say instead hi people how are you and now I save the file notice that Gatsby sees that change recompiles the files for me in the background and then tells the web browser hey you need to update and show the latest file so that's going to be very useful to us going forward in the coming videos and I just wanted to show it to you. But that is how you get a Gatsby site. Uh, you download Gatsby, install it, and then you create a site template uh, to, ready to get started with. And hopefully this has been helpful to you. In the coming videos, we'll be going a lot further in depth with Gatsby and some of the features and plugins.